All right, number 20, we have f of x is the square root of 1 plus the square root of x. We want to find f prime of x. So rewriting without the root, we'd have big one half and then 1 plus x to the little one half here. So chain rule unraveling, we have the outer function, which is stuff to the one half. So the derivative of stuff to the one half is one half times the stuff, negative one half times the derivative of the stuff. So the stuff is 1 plus x to the 1 half, and multiply by the derivative of the stuff, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Okay, now we have some algebra to do. So we have a half times a half, which is a quarter. So I want to make a big fraction bar. I want to put a 4 in the denominator, and we have 1 plus x to the 1 half to the negative 1 half going down there. So that's a radical 1 plus radical x, and then we have another radical x going down there, and a 1 upstairs, and this turns into choice D. Not too bad. Not too bad. Number 21, find the equation of the tangent line of that graph through 2, negative 1. Another implicit diff question. We get, excuse me, we get 18x plus 32y dy over dx equals 0. Um, we get 32y, sorry, 32y dy over dx equals negative 18x. Dividing by 32y, divide by 32y, we get dy over dx. Negative 18 over 32 reduces, if you divide by 2, it will reduce to negative 9 over 16. Um, so we get um, dy dx is negative 9x over 16y. Let me rewrite that. That's not very neat. So we get negative 9x over 16y. And then they're asking for the equation of the tangent line. So y minus y1 becomes y plus 1 equals some slope times x minus 2. The slope, the slope has to be negative 9. x was 2. y was negative 1. So we get negative 18 over negative 16, which is better known as 9 eighths. So we get 9 eighths as the slope. But we want it in this format, so we're going to have to distribute and play around here. So we have y plus 1 is 9 eighths x minus, um, well, we can just do 18 over 8 for now, because we're going to have to end up multiplying out by the 8 anyway. So if I multiply both sides by 8 here, we will get 8y plus 8 is 9x minus 18. And we want everything over to the side where the x is. If you notice, we're starting off with a positive 9x. So I will subtract 8y, and I'll subtract 8. And so we end up getting 0 is equal to 9x minus 8y minus 26, which is the same thing as choice B. 22, find the slope of the normal line to y equals x plus cosine x, y at 0, 1. Tricky here. Remember, since it's y equals, you will have a dy dx on the left-hand side. A few of you missed that on the quiz on one of these questions. So we get dy over dx is equal to 1 plus cosine of stuff. So that's the derivative. That is negative sine of stuff times the derivative of the stuff, which is a product rule question. Real simple derivatives, though. I'll write them up here, and we'll cross them. x dy over dx plus y. And so now, this is a little tricky. We have to get, we have to figure out a way to get all the dy dx's to one side. The easiest way in this problem is going to end up being distributing the sine xy through the parentheses here. So one, we have one minus sine xy times an x dy dx, I'm going to throw the x in front as if it were a coefficient, which it really is, minus y sine of xy. Then, we're going to collect all our dy dx terms, so we're going to add x sine xy d 
dy over dx to both sides. And if you think about this this way, I want to try to do two steps in one. There's a dy, there's a one in front of the dy dx. So we can factor out a dy dx and be left with 1 plus x sine of xy equals 1 minus y sine xy. So 1 minus sine, what, sorry, 1 minus y sine of xy. And then we can divide by 1 plus x sine of xy. And so we get dy over dx is this monstrosity. 1 minus y sine of xy. Unfortunately, there's no simplification we can do here. Is over 1 plus x sine of xy. Now, we have to find the slope of the normal line at 0, 1. So 0, 1 makes this kind of easy. 0, 1, first of all, you plug in x equals 0 here. This term vanishes, so on the bottom we just get a 1. So that's nice. We can deal with the numerator now. So it's 1 minus 1 sine of 0 times 1 which is just 1 minus 1 sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so this is just 1. Wow, that, that is unbelievable. That works out to just be a 1. And then M, uh, the perpendicular slope would be the reciprocal of 1, which is negative 1. So here we are at negative 1 is the answer. Boy, a lot of work for just a little answer like that. All right, number 23. If y is this monstrosity to the fourth, we want to find dy dx of x equals 1. So, um, so we have y is equal to stuff to the fourth. So we got dy over dx is 4 times stuff to the third times derivative of stuff. So stuff is x, x to the third minus 2 over 2x to the fifth minus 1. Now times the derivative of the stuff, I'm going to have to make a bigger parentheses here for sure. So we have a quotient rule problem on our hands. So High is x to the third minus 2. High prime is 3x squared. Low is 2x to the fifth minus 1. Low prime would be 10x. And I'm writing a 5, but let me try writing a 10. So we have low d high. 2x to the fifth minus 1 times high, which is 3x squared, minus high d low. So that's x to the third minus 2 times 10x over low squared, which is 2x to the fifth minus 1 squared. All right, well, this is kind of obnoxious, but at x equals 1, we could probably just plug in a 1 here and get away with not having to simplify. So dy over dx at x equals 1 would be 4 times Basically, any time I see an x, I'm just going to take its coefficient. 1 minus 2 over 2 minus 1 to the third times 2 minus 1 times 3 minus 1 minus 2 times 10 over 2 minus 1 squared. What's kind of nice about this is 2 minus 1 is 1, so the denominator is just a 1, so we can just deal with the numerator. So this is a 1. And this is what I mean. This is a 1. So the denominator is just 1. So that's a fantastic for us. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Cubed is negative 1. So we have 4 times negative 1 times. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 2. Uh, one, sorry. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative negative 1 is 1. So this becomes plus 10. So we get negative 4 times 13 really here. Which should be negative 52 if I did everything correctly. Negative 52, and that's an answer. Nice. All right, number 24. We have the derivative of tan squared of 4x, so that's a bad way to write this. This is a much better way to write it, and it is a double chain rule problem. So we get 2 tan of 4x, that's the derivative of the outer, with respect to the inner, times the derivative of tangent of stuff, which is secant squared of the stuff. And this is where everybody forgets. 
four x is in the in this function, and that needs a derivative also of four. So we end up getting, um, let's see, eight um, tan of four x secant squared of four x, otherwise known as choice C. And this is a quick hint. You know, usually the chain rule problems. If you look at the choices. These double chain rule problems, it's usually the it's the answer is usually the choice with the most going on. Um, I, I don't want to use that as a general rule, but that, that is a good hint for you. All right, what it says, 25 says, what is the instantaneous rate of change at t equals negative 1 of that function? Instantaneous rate of change is the IROC, as we always say in class, and it means derivative. So we're taking the derivative. F prime of t is, and we're going to use the quotient rule here. Um, let me just lower this so we can use the quotient rule. Pi is t cubed plus t. I prime is t, uh, 3t squared plus 1. Low is 4t plus 1. And low prime is 4. So we have low d high, 4t plus 1, times d high, which is 3t squared plus 1, minus high d low, t cubed plus t times a 4, I'm just going to th throw the 4 in front, over low squared, which is 4t plus 1 squared. So, a few things. I, I, you could simplify this, but I would not because you're plugging in a pretty simple number. Um, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. So every time we see this factor, it's going to be a negative 3. Um, 3 times negative 1 squared is 3, plus 1 is 4. So I'm really just doing f prime of negative 1 in blue here. 4 times t cubed, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, plus a negative 1 is negative 2. So now we have a pretty easy problem here. So we have a uh, negative 12, a negative 4 times a negative 2 is a positive 8, over negative 3 squared is 9. So we end up getting negative 4 ninths, and that's choice D. Oops. 26, we want to find k so that this function is continuous. So if you notice, x squared minus 16 over x to the 4, uh, sorry, x minus 4 can be simplified if you factor the numerator. Very similar to the uh, problem we had on here. So this function is really f of x is x plus 4 if x is not equal to 4, and it's something if x is 4. Well, this is, right now, the function is just a line with y-intercept of 4 and slope of 1 with a hole. So if we figure out f of 4, if we just plug into the top rule, 4 plus 4 is 8. So if we redefine this function to be 8 when x is 4, that'll fill the hole. So that's the answer. Number 27. What is the equation of the line tangent to the graph of sine squared x at x equals pi over 4? I'm going to try to do this one real fast before we get to 15 minutes here. dy over dx. So y, by the way, is sine of x squared. So the derivative is 2 sine x cosine x. At pi over 4, we would have 2 sine pi over 4 cosine of pi over 4. Um, both sine and cosine of pi over 4 are, ra are 1 over radical 2. So we get 2 times 1 over radical 2 times 1 over radical 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. So the slope of the tangent line is just a positive 1, which, by the way, if you take a look, that eliminates 1, 2, 3 choices. So now you're down to here. We need to evaluate sine squared of x at x equals pi over 4 to get the answer. So what... Um, Sine of pi over 4 is 1 over radical 2. Square that. We get a half. So that's what we need to subtract. And so our answer is choice B. And I don't even need to write out all the work for that one if you just kind of use the choices to your advantage, which I have not been doing as much on this video because some of these could be part twos. Um, but there's one where you can kind of use the choices to your advantage. 